Hello and a very warm welcome to Saurav Sir's classes. In today's tutorial, our focus will be on topics of geology and geophysics. We will be actually doing some theoretical portion as well as we will choose some random questions from random chapters and also try and answer some of the diagrams or application of the theory part etc. So this video will be a lot will be really interesting. So stay with me till the end of the video and comment whether you like it or not. So let's get started with the first question. Now the question says which type of fault is developed in the setting shown in the figure below which is this. Velocity vectors on either side of the fault are given in figure. Okay. Now, there are four options and we need to choose the most appropriate one. So, let us see. So, first we will analyze. In the given diagram actually, velocity vectors are indicating extensional forces that two in the same direction. So, these type of forces actually leads to development of extensionals or normal faults. That means the correct answer to this particular question will be option number A. However, I will we'll like to give a little more information with regard to this particular question you must remember that i'll just add two points that compre or compressional forces actually leads to development of reverse faults while the shear forces actually leads to development of strike slip faults There's just a little bit of extra which is not required here whatever it is so the correct answer to this particular question will be option number a moving on to the next question now the next question says that the groundwater flow equation has been provided to us this is the left hand side and the right hand side equal to zero where H is nothing but hydraulic lead and X and Y, X, Y and Z are the coordinates. And we need to find is valid when the flow condition is. So, we need to get the flow condition. Okay. So, let's do it. So, the generalized groundwater flow equation we will start with this is actually given by del k subscript x del h by del x by dx okay plus del k y del h by del y by dy plus del k z del h by del z by dz and this is equal to s subscript s del h by del t okay now for homogeneous so homogeneous and isotropic aquifer we require del 2h the second order derivative initially we were concerned with only first order derivative now i'm talking about the second order derivative del x2 plus del 2h and these are our partial del 2y del 2h by del z2 is equal to s s s subscript s k by k del h del t and within brackets we have kx ky kz is equal to k okay so that's why here k comes 
now for confined aquifer of thickness b s is equal to s subscript s b and t is equal to k b okay so we have let me insert a page for you guys so we have del 2h by del x2 plus del 2h by dy2 plus del 2h by dz2 will be equal to s by capital t del h by del t now if you look at the steady state then at steady state situation steady state situation we actually have inflow equal to outflow so we can write del 2h by del x2 plus del 2h by dy2 plus del 2h by dz2 is equal to 0 or we can write it as nabla squared h is equal to 0 minus Laplace equation and this is nothing but the required condition moving on to the next question the next question is this question says Los Angeles aberration test was conducted for granite aggregate with an initial weight of 4800 grams after the test the aggregate weight weight is this so there is a reduction the loss aberration value needs to be calculated in percentage so let us do it so the aberration value can be calculated using a very particular formula so the, we will use the formula that is loss in weight by initial weight so by initial weight okay so this is 4800 that is present my my um, initial minus the present past minus the present by past so this becomes 0 0.27 and since you want the value in percentage so it will be 27 percent so this will be 27 moving on to the next question this will be la the last question which we will be dealing in today's tutorial the question says brightness temperature is a function of surface temperature and so there are, will be two factors and you need to choose the next one so they have provided with a lot of options like transmittance reflectance refractive index emissivity etc so let us first define brightness temperature so it is actually defined as temperature of a black body that actually emits same intensity as measured so brightness temperature so let me write it down brightness temperature is actually found by inverting Planck's function okay and you know Planck's function that means what I'm trying to say is TB that means brightness temperature is equal to C2 by lambda log 1 plus C1 by lambda to the power 5 i subscript lambda bracket close so this serves as a denominator and let me tell you what the donation uh, notations actually mean this you already know is our brightness temperature now r c2 has a value of so i'll choose another color so it will be convenient 
C2 has the value 1.4. So it is 1.4388 into 10 to the power 4 k mu m. Our C1 has the value 1.1911 into 10 to the power 8 w m s actually this will be in capital so it will be 10 to the power 8 w m s mu m to the power 4 so this will be there this is nothing but measured intensity okay and our lambda is nothing but wavelength so this is the corresponding meaning of all the notations that i have used so given this we can clearly say that brightness temperature is a function of surface temperature and emissivity that is option number d will be the correct answer to this particular question so with this we actually wind up today's tutorial so I hope this short tutorial on geology and geophysics where we have actually solved some application that we learned the application of the theory that we actually learned was helpful. If yes, then don't forget to hit the like button. Do subscribe to our channel, share our videos and thank you so much for watching.